We start with details of the compensation plan shared by the Union Administration for Korean victims of Japan's wartime forced labor. And for that, I have our foreign affairs correspondent, Pei Eunji, standing by live on the line. So, Eunji, a public foundation, I hear, will be compensating the Korean victims. Tell us more. That's right, Sunny. Foreign Minister Park Jin announced that the South Korean government will compensate the victims using funds procured through third party, a public foundation called the Foundation for Victims of Forced Mobilization by Imperial Japan. He said the foundation will pay the compensation and interest on the delayed payment to the plaintiffs of the final rulings made in 2018, and that the same foundation will also cover the compensation and interest for the plaintiffs of pending cases if the court rules in their favor. Over four years ago, South Korea's Supreme Court made landmark rulings, ordering two Japanese companies, Mitsubishi Heavy Industries and Nippon Steel, to compensate 15 Korean victims of forced labor during Japanese colonial rule. Seoul Foreign Ministry explained that the government came up with a solution as its priority is to arrange the payments as soon as possible, as many victims have already passed away or, or are in their 90s. It also said the solution is aimed at improving relations between the two countries, which have been strained since 2019 when the Japanese government implemented export, rest export restrictions. We hope this solution works as a way to overcome the conflicts between South Korea and Japan and paves the way for a new era. I think this is the last chance to do this. Korean businesses that were beneficiaries of the 1965 treaty that normalized bilateral ties, including POSCO, will be making contributions to the foundation. The Korean government says it has left the door open, though, for Japanese corporations to take part in the future. But it's likely that, Jap that the Japanese firms will not be making contributions to the foundation, insisting all matters were settled under the 1965 treaty. So the victims and the civic groups supporting them have been protesting against the government's plan, saying this issue cannot be resolved without sincere apologies and participation from the Japanese companies. Right, I see. And Eunjie, in the meantime, what has been the response from neighboring Japan regarding this latest development here? In a press briefing in Japan following South Korea's announcement, Tokyo's foreign minister Hayashi Yoshimasa told reporters that he hopes the solution will further deepen ties between the two countries. He also said South Korea and Japan are important neighbors that need to co cooperate in order to respond to various global issues. That's all I have for now. Back to you, Sunny. All right, Eunji, thank you for that coverage. That was our Pei Eunji reporting live from the Foreign Ministry here in capital, Seoul.